Hey guys, Lindsay Bowden here and welcome to this video lesson about reasoning and logic. So we're going to start talking about reasoning first and the two different types of reasoning. So reasoning is a systematic way of coming to a conclusion. And there are two major types of reasoning. The first one is called inductive reasoning and that means coming to a conclusion based on patterns or observations. It starts with specific and it goes to general. So you start with a specific observation and that leads you to a general conclusion. So an example of that would be it rained yesterday and the day before. That's a specific example. So you conclude it's going to rain today. All right, In, uh, deductive reasoning is coming to a conclusion based on general rules. It starts with general or broad. And it goes to specific. All right, an example of that would be all humans need water. Sarah is a human, therefore Sarah needs water. Okay, so let's quickly talk about which of these is better or worse, or is there a right answer to that question? So as you can tell in the example for inductive reasoning, that is not necessarily a true statement. Just because it rained yesterday and the day before, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to rain today or it's going to rain every day. Deductive reasoning, let's talk about this example. This says all humans need water, that's true. Sarah is a human, that's also true, therefore she needs water. So in that case, that is true. But both of these types of reasonings have instances where they are true and instances where they are false. So it's really a case by case situation, but I will say deductive is usually the way to go. That's usually the more, um, the best way for reasoning. All right, so let's go down here and talk about some examples. Okay, so this says identify the scenario is inductive or deductive reasoning. All right, so the first one says Joe flipped a quarter and it landed on tails three times. Therefore, it will land on tails when he flips it again. Okay, I'm going to give you a second, write down what you think, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so on this example, you should have said inductive. So he noticed that there was a pattern. The quarter landed on tails three different times. That's a pattern of landing on tails. Therefore, he concludes that when he flips it again, it's going to land on tails again. So that is a pattern, and he's going from a specific instance to a more general conclusion. All right, now let's talk about if that's true or not. That won't necessarily always be true. Just because you landed on tails three different times, the chance of landing on tails again is still a one out of two chance because there are two sides to a balanced, you know, normal coin. So that's not necessarily true. All right, number two, apples are a type of fruit. Granny Smith is a type of apple, so it is a fruit. Write down what you think, inductive or deductive. Okay, so for this one, you should have gotten deductive, all right? Because this is a generalization. Apples are a fruit. That's a general statement. Since Granny Smith is a type of apple, we can conclude that that specific type of apple is a fruit, and that is a true statement. All right, the next one, number three, acute angles are less than 90 degrees. An angle is 47 degrees, so it is an acute angle. Write down what you think. All right, we should have gotten deductive again for that one. It's very similar to number two. This is a general statement, and that is true. And then this is a specific example, but we can uh, apply the general statement to that specific example. All right, and then the last one, number four. Julie is from Sweden and has blonde hair. Therefore, all people from Sweden have blonde hair. All 
All right, so for this one, you should have gotten inductive because you're going from a specific person to a generalization. And again, that's not necessarily true. All people from Sweden do not necessarily have blonde hair. Okay, let's move on down here. We're going to continue with our notes and talk about conjectures and counterexamples. So a conjecture is a conclusion that is formed using inductive reasoning. An example is the cafeteria had cookies for the last three days, so it will have cookies today. So that is inductive reasoning and you are coming to a conclusion using that reasoning because this is a pattern. There's been a pattern of having cookies. So we're taking that specific pattern and applying it to a generalization. It's gonna, we're gonna have cookies today and probably tomorrow too. Again, not necessarily true. A counter example is a statement that proves that a conjecture is false. So to prove that this count, uh, conjecture is a false, we could say the cafeteria doesn't have cookies today. So that conjecture was a false. All right, and we've talked about this a little bit, but let's think about, do you think inductive or deductive reasoning is the most logical way to reason and why? So write down your thoughts here, pause the video, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so I kind of discussed this before, but usually deductive reasoning is the most logical way because you're going from a broad general statement that covers a lot of things to a specific example inside that broad statement. You're going from broad to specific. Now, both actually have pros and cons because just because something is under a broad category doesn't mean it's always going to have the exact same, you know, um, properties that the broad category does. There's always exceptions to the rule, so that's when deductive reasoning would not work. For inductive reasoning, using patterns is a great way to form a conjecture about something else, but it's not always going to follow the pattern. So again, both have pros and cons. Number two says when using inductive reasoning, is the conclusion always true? And then what about deductive reasoning? And I kind of just went over that, but write your thoughts down on that and pause the video and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so like I said before, Neither of them will always be true. Neither inductive nor deductive will always lead to a true statement. There's always going to be exceptions to every rule. Okay, so let's take what we have learned and go over some more examples. All right, number one, give it a counter example for the following conjecture. If an animal has stripes, it is a tiger. So think about a counter example, something that proves that false. All right, so there are lots of examples. The first thing that I thought of was a zebra. A zebra has stripes, but it is not a tiger. So that would be a counter example. Number two says, give a counter example for the following conjecture. If a number is squared, the result must be greater than one. So think about a counter example for that, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so here is an example that I thought of. If you square zero, you're just gonna get zero. And zero is not greater than one, it's less than one. So that is a counter example. All right, and number three, create your own example of inductive reasoning. So try to think of a pattern that you have seen and then you can apply that to a more general statement and write that down on number three.
Okay, so this is one I thought of. I ice cream for the last three days. So I'll eat ice cream, oops. today and again not necessarily true but it could be true maybe I will eat ice cream today all right number four give your own example of deductive reasoning so this is where you take a general statement and apply it to a specific example try to think of your own and write it down now Okay, so this is what I thought of. All quadrilaterals have four sides. A square has four sides. Can you tell where I'm going to go with this? So a square must be a quadrilateral. All right, if you have the practice that goes along with these notes, you can go ahead and try that now, and I will see you guys in the next lesson.